Let's use the density matrix to describe the state of a qubit. We can describe the state of a qubit using the ket. And we can label this ket with the Greek letter psi. Now we can take the identity operator and act on this ket from the left. And that will allow us to express this state in terms of the computational basis. So let's do that. We're going to have a ket bra combination of the state denoted by zero. That's going to act on psi. And then we're also going to have a ket bra combination of the state denoted by one. And that's going to act on psi. So what is this ket bra? Well, the ket bra is a projector. And it projects onto a subspace. So this projector over here projects onto the subspace spanned by the zero state. And this projector projects onto the subspace spanned by the one state. So zero and one are just labels. They're labels for the computational basis states. And these basis states actually form the eigenbasis of the Pauli Z operator. We can identify a ket bra over here in the projector, but we can also identify a bra ket. And a bra ket is the notation for the inner product. So this is an inner product, and we can evaluate that inner product as a complex number. So let's denote this bra ket as a complex number, which is called alpha zero. And that's an element of the complex numbers. I'm using this fancy C to denote the complex numbers. We can also do that over here for this inner product. This I can call alpha one, and that is also an element of the complex numbers. So we can write this in a far more succinct form. This is alpha zero times the zero state plus alpha one times the one state. And what we have over here is a linear combination of the basis states. These two states form a basis for a two-dimensional Hilbert space. Why is it a two-dimensional Hilbert space? It's because we're describing a qubit. And a qubit is described by this two-dimensional Hilbert space. So we only need two basis vectors. In general, if you have higher dimensional Hilbert spaces, you are going to need more basis vectors to span the entire space. Now, what I also want to do is write these coefficients in this linear combination in terms of some angles. So what I'm going to do is parameterize these coefficients in terms of angles. And we're going to see how that can be used to construct a spherical visualization. And that spherical vi visualization is known as the block sphere. So let's do that over here. I'm going to have a global phase factor of e to the i omega. And it turns out that this global phase factor has no physical significance. But I'm going to write it here to demonstrate a point. Then we're going to have cosine of theta on 2. And this is going to be the coefficient of the state denoted by 0 over here. And then what about this coefficient over here? We're going to have a relative phase factor of e to the i phi. So this relative phase does have a physical significance. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have sine of theta on 2, and that's the coefficient of the state denoted by 1. And I'll close the brackets over here. So now we have everything we need for this ket. We have this ket, but we also want to have the bra version. So once we have the bra version, we can construct the density operator, or the density matrix. So let's take the bra version of, of this ket. That's the same as uh, taking the Hermitian adjoint. So we can write the bra like this. We still have psi over here. And when we're dealing with the bra, we have to act from the right. So over here, we have the identity operator acting from the left. And now we want to act from the right. So that's going to look like this. We have this bra version of psi. And then we're acting from the right with this projector. And over here, we're also going to act from the right with the projector. And we can identify an inner product over here and another inner product over here. 
This inner product can be evaluated as the complex number, which is the complex conjugate of this complex number. So here we have alpha zero, and this is alpha zero bar. And the bar denotes the complex conjugate. So this is also a complex number. So it's an element of the complex numbers. And over here we have alpha one bar, and that's an element of the complex numbers as well. So why is it the complex conjugate? Well, it's because the order is swapped in the inner product. You can see that this psi and this zero, they are swapped, their positions are swapped. And this property is one of the axioms of an inner product. It is called conjugate symmetry. If you swap the order of the bra and the cat in this inner product, then you're going to get a complex conjugate. So that is going to give us this, and we can also write that more succinctly as alpha zero bar, and then we turn this cat into a bra, and over here we have a bar on this alpha one, and we also have to turn this cat into a bra. So this is the bra version of this expression. Now let's write the bra version of this parameterized form in terms of the angles. The global phase factor is going to have a minus sign because we have to take the complex conjugate. This cosine of theta on two is going to remain unchanged, but this cat will have to turn into a bra. And then we're going to have e to the minus i phi. And then we will have sine of theta on two, and this cat will turn into a bra. And I'll close the brackets over here. So now we have the cat version and the bra version. One thing that I want to uh, impose on those two angles is some restrictions on their domain. So theta, I'm going to restrict theta to be between zero and pi radians. And I'm going to restrict this phi to be between zero and two pi radians. But notice that I'm not putting less than or equal to over here, because if I put less than or equal to over here, then I would be double counting. I would have another uh, two, two, two unique ways to write the same state, and that's not what I want. So what, what, how can we actually interpret these two angles, theta and phi? In a spherical coordinate system, we can interpret theta as an angle going up from the north pole down to the south pole. So when theta is equal to zero, we're at the north pole of this imaginary sphere. And when theta goes to pi radians, we're at the south pole at the bottom. So that's why we impose this restriction. If we allow theta to go beyond this restriction, then we're just going to be going around. Now that is unavoidable because of the topology of a sphere. If you go around a sphere, you go back to where you started. So that's why we have to impose this condition. Otherwise, we're going to have different combinations of theta and phi, which give the same point on this imaginary sphere. Now, what about this over here? Well, phi, that tells us if we rotate around the sphere. So if we're going around that sphere, we're going to start off at zero, and then we're going to go two pi around. But it turns out that zero and two pi, they correspond to the same point. So this is the same as this. That's why we don't put a less than or equal to sign over here, we just put a less than sign. So we could also choose the equal sign to go over here, and then we would ignore this zero. But this is a convention. So that is the convention that we're using. So now we've imposed some restrictions on the angles theta and phi. We have the ket and we have the bra, and that gives us all the information we need to construct the density matrix for this quantum state of a qubit. The density matrix rho can be written as the ket bra combination of psi. So it's just like a projector. Here we have a projector from this zero state and a projector from this one state. And we're using the general qubit state psi to create this density operator. So if we consider this form and this form in the computational basis, we can write this out as four terms. We're going to get alpha zero absolute value squared. That comes from alpha zero times its complex conjugate. That's the same as the absolute value squared. And that's going to be the coefficient of the zero, zero ket bra. Then if we consider this term times this term, that's the same as the absolute value of alpha one squared. And that's going to multiply the one, one ket bra. In a matrix representation, this and this, these guys are diagonal terms. 
Now let's have a look at the off-diagonal terms. We're going to have alpha 0, alpha 1 bar, and that's going to multiply the 0, 1 term. And we're going to have one more term, that is the alpha 0 bar, alpha 1 term, and that multiplies the 1, 0 term. So these two terms are actually Hermitian adjoints of each other. You can see that when we have alpha 0 over here, we have the Ket version of the state 0. And when we have the bra version of 1, that's the complex conjugate over here. And the opposite is true for this term. Here we have the complex conjugate on alpha 0, and then we have the bra version of 0. So those come from the cross terms when we uh, do this expansion. So what we're actually doing is we're expanding this ket as this term, and then on the right we have this bra expanded out. That gives us these four terms. Now that we have uh, this expansion over here, we can take the trace of this density operator. So let's take the trace of rho. That's the same as sandwiching this ket bra between the basis states. So we have two basis states, that's this zero basis state, and we also need the one basis state. So this is how we take the trace for a two-dimensional Hilbert space. For higher dimensional Hilbert spaces, we would have more terms. We'd have a, a term like this for all of the basis states. So here we have a bra and a ket sandwiching this ket-bra combination. But we can also identify this as an inner product and another inner product over here. So we can write this in another way. We can write this combination over here as a swapped over version. We can swap these guys around because this is just a complex number and complex numbers satisfy commutativity. So we can write this as psi times this catch bra of zero, zero, and then we can put psi over here. I'll put a plus sign here. And then this term we can also swap around. That's gonna give us psi and then we'll put the 1, 1 ket bra, and then we'll have psi over here. So all I've done is swap these guys around. So originally, we identified this thing in the middle as a ket bra. But then we also looked at it in a different way. We identified this as a bra ket and another bra ket. And because those can be evaluated as complex numbers, we can use commutativity and swap the order. And what does that actually give us? Well, we can, we can identify that there is a bra version of psi and a cat version of psi on both of these terms. So let's factor that out. That's going to give us a bra version of psi times the projector 0, 0, plus the projector 1, 1. And over here, I'm going to put the cat version of psi. So I've just factored out that's common for both of these terms. And what are we left with in the middle? This is the identity operator. So we have the identity operator. That's the same identity operator that we acted with up here. So we use this identity operator. We acted uh, on this ket from the left and on this bra from the right. And that allowed us to express this state in terms of the computational basis, which is the eigenbasis of the Pauli Z operator. Another way of looking at this is we can identify that these inner products are the same inner products that we saw over here. So we can write this as the absolute value of alpha 0 squared plus the absolute value of alpha 1 squared. That's the same as the inner product of psi with itself, which is equal to 1. This is the normalization condition. And you can also identify that this is the identity operator, so the identity operator has no effect. That means we can ignore this combination over here, and we can just treat this as a bra cat combination of psi with itself. So all of these guys here are equivalent, and this is equal to 1. Another observation we can make is that the square of rho is equal to this cat bra written twice. So we have cat bra, and then we have another copy of cat bra. And what we can identify is that in the middle, we have a bra ket of psi with itself, and that's equal to 1. That's from the normalization condition. And that means we can ignore this because this is just a number, it's just 1, and that brings these guys together, which leaves us with the ket bra of psi with itself. And that's equal to rho. So that means that rho squared is equal to rho. Now, because rho squared is equal to rho, 
we can infer that the trace of rho squared is equal to the trace of rho, and that's equal to one. This quantity, the trace of rho squared, is called the purity of this density operator. And the purity is equal to one in this case. That's because we're dealing with a pure quantum state. And another interesting property that we can uh, observe from here is that if we take the Hermitian adjoint of this density operator, that's the same as taking the Hermitian adjoint of this ket bra. And when we take the Hermitian adjoint, we have to turn the ket into a bra and the bra into a ket. And that's going to give us the same ket bra that we started with, which is equal to rho. So what do we have? We have that the square of the density uh, operator is equal to itself. The Hermitian adjoint of the density operator is equal to itself. And the trace of rho squared is equal to one. All of these facts are saying the same thing. They're saying that we're dealing with a pure state. And a pure state has this form. It is the ket bra combination of a state psi. So pure states are very special states because they satisfy these properties. But in general, we are not always going to be dealing with pure states. We're going to be dealing with mixed states. And that is actually the motivation for defining this density matrix. So we define this density matrix not because we want to deal with pure states, but because we want to generalize to the concept of a mixed state. And we will see the mixed state in later videos.